Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. This is your reading for September 1st to the 15th, 2018 Love and General Reading. Just briefly showing you the cards that I will be using. I'm using the Tarot 3D as the the message of karma or dharma. I'm doing the divine reading and this is by David Corsi just so you can get a an idea of what I'm doing this month. I'm also I will be actually I'm going to be using the Albano White Tarot which is one of my favorite decks. Okay and it is it's a special edition by Frankie Albano as well as I will be using the La Vera Sibila for the extended Vimeo readings as well as the Whispers of Love Oracle Cards okay by Angela Hartfield for a message in relation to love and also getting a spirit message the spirit messages by John Holland Okay, it's another oracle deck. Okay, so these cards will be used in the Vimeo extended readings as well as the La Vera Sibila. Okay, for those, uh, for those of you that are interested in the astrology part of the reading, it will be after, after the readings have been done because most people uh, tend to look at the tarot more than what the astrology so stick around to the end of the reading if for your sign of course um, don't forget to check out your sun moon and rising signs and I'd like to also before I forget I'd like to wish Virgo a happy birthday many happy returns dear Virgo happy happy birthday to you okay let's go on to the readings now Hello Virgo, welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Here is your general and love reading, the divine spread for your birthday time. Happy birthday, Virgo. This is your solar return. You also have a new moon on the 9th of September, so it is a good time to start things start new projects, start anything that you want to begin. It is your solar return and that's when all the blessings come in. Now, if for those of you that are going through difficult times, know that it is the universe trying to put you on the right path. Let's see. For Virgo. Okay, we've got the hanged man and it just always seems to be happening with us. The hanged man is here. Now this is a sense of sacrifice. Something is waiting to start. Now, in relation to the astrology, I do know that the astrology is not so simple um, in the first week of September. So do know that after the 6th, I'm going to take another card, dear Virgo. After the 6th, whatever you have sacrificed, whatever you have been holding on for, will be showing up. So keep the faith, stay put, and get ready. Get ready to be catapulted forward. And let's see what else we've got. We've got the High Priestess. So the High Priestess is a number 2, right? She's a number two, which does speak, twos always speak of balance. Now the high priestess could speak of secrets. Um, the high priestess does talk about the axis Virgo Pisces. Now Pisces for you is your seventh house, which is your relationship house. So there may be secrets coming to light. You may be enlightened because... The hanged man, and this is the Dharma or Karma, Karma or Dharma position, right? So do know that you are being enlightened. See that halo. He is receiving the download, right? Having the sun in your sign says that you are receiving the clarity on whatever has been hidden. Now, the high priestess always speaks of a new door. 
entering into a new phase and it's funny because this is the card of Pisces as well Pisces and Neptune in Pisces Neptune is the rose-colored glasses but it's also the divine love so you have been sacrificing and giving it seems as though giving of yourself waiting on that divine love right now as I'm doing this reading the moon is in Pisces do pay attention pay attention to your dreams now this card just popped out I'm going to put it in the distant past the root of the matter so this is a water sign an offer that has come in let's cut the cards dear Virgo Okay. So in the position that is hidden, hidden from you and you do not know is the Queen of Wands. In the recent past we have the Nine of Cups. In the present position we've got the Two of Pentacles. your crowning card and your goal your goals and aspirations is the page of wands the advice and the action to take is the empress so patience patience yes the outcome card is the tower wow and i will be pulling one more card on that plus more cards for the whole reading for the Vimeo extended readings. Let's see what the planetary is showing, the positions of the planets and the divine message. We've got the Eight of Wands. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to take another card on the Tower. That is the final card, the outcome card. So that is Uranian energy. Expect the unexpected. And breaking down what does not work for you because Uranus is in Taurus. Okay, this is the card. And we've got the Five of Wands. So now the Five of Wands is a card of conflict. Fives always speak of conflict, but it speaks of something coming in to break down what has not been working for you. Um, so fives are a number of imbalance. Now, when I look at this card, there is another aspect, another meaning. It does say that five people are trying to build on something. Now, these people could have miscommunication. Okay, they're very passionate. They're all holding one wand each. And that's what they are like pushing forward for what inspires inspires them but they may not be on the same page so communication is very key here now speaking of building speaking of building we do have a building here now Uranus in Taurus Taurus is all about building building on your foundation right many Taurian people are into building they like to build stability right so there could be you know the tower can be difficult energy always because yes it can be a physical coming down of a building god forbid but if that is not the case then it does speak of our foundation right something is rocking our foundation so there are disagreements um, in trying to build on something but then if there has been disagreements here comes the tower this is the universe and says that this has not been working for you if you cannot build on something then I'm going to break it down so there is a massive change here 
Now, it could go either way. It could go in the way that there will be a sense of being on the same page and being able to communicate, okay, because there is a shift. That's the, that's the tower. There is a shift here. So we go from the five to the eight. This is the divine message here. Now, eights always speak of the house of Scorpio, which is death and transformation, other people's money, shared resources, um, money coming from others, right? Also, uh, you know, loans, deeds, wills, things like that. Scorpio is also the house of passion and deep sexual connections. Now, the eight of wands can speak of travel, quick travel, messages through social media, interaction through social media, and also Cupid's arrows. Cupid's love arrows are these, and they are looking towards the future. Now, if we look at this position here, there is an offer that has probably come through. Now, it could go either way. You've either sent this message. Now, your Virgo, if you are, um, you are being being a Virgo. Sorry, I don't can't get my words straight. Being a Virgo says that your opposite sign is Pisces, right? Now we had a full moon in Pisces just uh, the last full moon at the end of, it was on the 26th actually of uh, August, which was a couple of days ago. To, actually, today's the 28th, yes, 28th of August. So someone is uh, trying to send through a message. I believe that that's what's going to be the clarity for you because it does deal with a full moon in Pisces. Now the Knight of Cups is an offer from a water sign, could be Piscean, yes, Sun, Moon or Rising, could be any other sign as well. We've got a few signs here, right? Um, but it is an offer coming in. Now could it be an apology? Yes, it could be. Could you have made this offer in the distant past, if not around the full moon? Yes. You could have. But the Knight of Cups is someone who trots in. They wear their heart on their sleeve and they've got very mixed, They sometimes they give mixed signals. So they may not be actually speaking very clearly to you. Now, the Karma and Dharma position here shows that, yes, there's been a sacrifice, you've been holding on and waiting and again with Piscean energy, if you are dealing with a Piscean person, you need to trust your intuition that what you feel deep within your core, and this is, as I said, Virgo Piscean energy, anything to do with two, relationship, right? The secrets will probably be revealed because we've got the clarity here. We've got the information coming through from the divine. So yes, the messages are coming through from the divine. You see that? Now in the hidden position we've got the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is a fiery, passionate, very sexual energy, very very driven and very quick, quick to move. Now we've got the Queen of Wands and we've also got the Page of Wands. So we've got two fire signs here. Now, we've got the Queen, which is someone who is much more mature, and we've got the Page of Wands. If this is um, your energy and this is your partner, then there may be a difference in maturity, even in years. Yes, that could be right. It could be how it shows up. And usually, if you are the female, let's say in this um partnership, relationship, whatever it is, it could even be business, yes? Um, it says that the female is much more mature, more in more in alignment with her passion, with her drive, you know, 
and just much more mature acting. Usually females are a little bit more ahead of the male. So the male here in the page, the page of wands is like taking a risk. It's the very abundant page, financially in a good position, but someone who is ready to take a leap, to take a risk, to move forward. Now this could be a message that is coming through. We do have messages here. Check that out. Now pages always speak of something coming in to bring change and it can be something that is very passionate, something that is creatively, it's like the light bulb that comes on because he is holding that ace of wands, right? If this is anything to do with creative projects, then the message that's going to come in is going to be something that's going to fit you because they're both holding a wand as you can see. It's like a new doorway. Look at those wands together. It's like having the two of wands. Two people working together. One is uh, much more youthful, so more risk-taking, you know, youthful people, uh, children, let's say. They don't think of the consequences. They go straight for what they feel. So there is a much more collected, um, more mature sort of an energy to this Queen of Wands. So I do believe that there is a good match here. And looking right across this Page of Wands is looking right across at this Empress. Now the Empress can be an Aries, right? Queen of Wands here in the hidden position could be the energy of Aries. Now Aries is the... Um, first sign of the zodiac right um aries is actually where the full moon will be happening in september could it be that there is some sort of message that is coming through um so any risk taking is going to bring this energy now this is not a person this is an energy it's a three major arcana so it speaks all about taking the harvest, receiving, you know, anything that you've been patient with, have you been patient with a message, it seems as though it's coming through, um, because she is a pregnant woman, she needs to be patient, in a matter of six months, she will be giving birth, so remember how I said, make your wish, you may get to this energy in a matter of six months. Whatever you wish for, you will have the Empress who will be giving birth at that time. Something new, whether it is literally or metaphorically, doesn't matter. Now, this could either be Aries or it could be, because we've got little Venus there, we could be talking about Taurian or Libran energy because Venus rules those two signs. Now, Venus is in Libra at the moment, right? So, Venus in Libra, and Libra is the house of partnership, romantic or, or even just business. Um, could we talk, be talking about the plant, uh, like this seed being planted at the time of Libra? When Venus is in Libra, which is now, right? That could be the case as well. Could it be in three weeks from now? Because she is a three. Three days, three weeks, three months, three to six months, I'm going to say, for some of you, right? Now, I do have two females here. I've got... The Queen of Wands, which is in the hidden position to you. So this is something that you do not know about. There is a Queen of Wands and then there is the Empress, which is, she is the Mother of Earth, right? So she's above. She's more important than the Queen of Wands. Now, could it be um, two females where one is in a higher position than the other being the empress being the higher up the the authority here um, 
it could be mother and daughter relationship here that we are talking about. It could even be, again, it could be a same-sex relationship because we've got two women here, right? Whatever the case, your action and your advice is to be patient and the action to take is that you need to wait. You do not need to take action right now. What the message is saying is sit back and relax and let the universe do this for you. You've already put in the hard work, dear Virgo. It's time for you with you, the sun in your sign. It's time for you to reap the rewards, right? Now in the recent past, we've got the nine of cups and it is a nine. One step before the ten. You are in a very good position, but um, that Ace of Cups is missing. It's, it's missing. And where is it? It's right here. It's right here. It's already been given out. It's like halfway there. Why do I say halfway? Because the, the Knight of Cups, as I said, he trots in. Sometimes he says yes, then he says no. Maybe he's just over-emotional, right? Maybe it's been just too difficult for him to move forward. Sometimes when, you know, I have been using the, um, the pictorial key tarot in the last readings, it does show the, the Knight of Cups being in too much water, right? So the horse was not able to move. I do feel as though... Because the energy of the hanged man does not only speak for you, it's the general energy, it's the karma or dharma. This person has got some hold up as well. And that's why they haven't been able to move. But they are literally moving into the message card. So they are some of some for some of you it might be you may be needing to move. This person may be needing to travel and they've been held up for some reason. So the Nine of Cups is a wish card, right? It is a nine which does remind me of the Hermit. There's someone looking into their lantern, looking at information, looking at the details, um, the Hermit is one step before the Wheel of Fortune, right? Now the Hermit does, it is the card of Virgo. So Virgo, look at the finer details. You may be missing something. There may be something that is missing. Or, again, you're waiting on the Divine download before you can move forward. Now, maybe dealing with the retrogrades. Now, having the Eight of Wands here in the planetary position does speak of all systems go. Now, with Mars turning direct, it's going to pick up speed slowly. So we won't be like, you know, hitting a brick wall or with anything that we want to move or accomplish or even send out whatever it is, messages, right? There's, it's like the door is opening for those messages, for those love arrows to come through. But it's going to pick up pace. Mars will pick up pace. It will do slowly though. Every day it will be picking more and more speed up. So now in the position of now another two, so juggling, juggling between two people, between a decision, between your money and your, between two jobs. Some of you may be doing two jobs. Virgo is very renowned for that. Um, you're trying to, um, make ends meet here with the two of pentacles. I feel as though financially you're trying to stretch your budget and you're, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not something that you could be doing forever. So we've got the page of wands in the goal or in the crowning position, which is something that you're probably going to be juggling with until that message actually either comes to you or you send that message out. 
Look at the potential though from juggling. So whatever do you, decision that you make, and we've got another two here, remember? Does speak of partnerships, does speak of balance. Look at where it heads. It goes to the Empress, it goes to the three. So let's say we've got a two and we've got the page of wands, they equal a three. That message is going to is going to help you build on whatever it is that you're wanting to accomplish. Is for some of you it could be trying to conceive because the Empress is a pregnant woman. But again, the advice is yes, take action, but don't overstress yourself. Know that you will be able to accomplish with the Empress being here. It's just a matter of time. Now, as I said, Saturn is moving direct. Fantastic. On the 6th of September, I have said all this astrology in the astrology part of the reading at the end of this reading. So Saturn, yes, which is the closed door, the locked door, will be opening on the 6th of September. So any time after that, there is potential for the Empress energy to come in. Fantastic. Now, let's look across this way. Trying to juggle things being up in the air. Yes, sacrificing. Sacrificing many things in your life. Trying to take off those rose-colored glasses, dear. Dear Virgo, having having Neptune in your seventh house, very, very difficult. But as soon as you are enlightened, see that doorway, see the two pillars. Going through, moving quickly. For some of you, this this these blessings are going to come in sooner than later. We do have the Nine of Cups, doesn't matter which position it's in right the nine of cups for me is a wish card for those of you that have been overindulging over drinking drowning your trying to drown your sorrows if there is like another person in the picture because we do have we've got two women here we've got two males here as well now, we could see these, uh, these two characters here as one male because we've got the Page of Wands, which is usually a message, right? The Knight of Cups, Knights are usually all about action, so taking action, right? So someone who, if we say that this is the same person, then this person was mostly in their emotions, maybe with the nine of cups remember I said there's that tenth cup here ten of cups is you know being at the completion of feeling a sense of bliss and happiness and it's just crazy you know feeling feeling that you've got everything that your heart ever wished for but here with a page of wands it does speak of taking a risk I feel as though that is really speaking to me there is a a necessity for not to trot in but for this character here to move forward and take that risk send that message off if we look across here we've got the tower breaking down breaking down on and bringing a shift, a change that may have you on cloud nine, right? For some of you, nine of cups, nine of cups could be the month of September. For others of you, this could be even in nine months from now. So we're in September um that would be sometime in may next year and you know that time is very fluid in the tarot it's very hard to pinpoint 
the right time when things are going to happen. Now, I do know that the tower, um, with the tower here, Uranian energy, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, and that's where, of course, Mars will be moving into um, very soon, like in a couple of weeks, yes. In a couple of weeks, Mars will be moving into Aquarius, so that may be when this tower energy is going to take place. As I said, Mars is not happy in Aquarius. Aquarius is social socializing it's other it's the groups being part of a group let's say even though Aquarius is usually they like to stand on their own do their own thing they still like to be part of a group as well but be an individual in that group now Aquarius is air and Mars is fire so having fire with air can be quite explosive so do take care don't get overheated, please. Dear Virgo, I'm just trying to see if there are any more messages coming through. If we look at this, this position here, dear Virgo, We've got the Queen of Wands, the Page of Wands, and the Eight of Wands. If we look at all the Wands together, it does add up to a ten. Eight and two Wands equal ten of Wands, which can be a burden, but the ten does break down to the one, so that is, again, there's that spark. Be careful that that spark does not become a huge inferno a huge fight okay take the inspiration and the creativity and try and do things right now with Mars moving direct it is very good but the only thing that I'm telling you is because Mars is going to be moving over the south node again I believe that some of you are letting go letting go of something that you've known before something that you've done in a previous life because the divine message is that there is movement, right? There is literal flight travel here. And again, messages do speak of the social media. Again, messages flying through the sky. Now, if you are starting something creative, this is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. There's going to be something sudden where is if, if you are in a group, right, if you are dealing with others, some of you may be breaking down and starting something new on your own. For others of you, this could be the opposite where you're moving into a group and you know, you're going to be with the same sort of people, people that are on the um, in the same line of business with you, and together you will be able to make something brand new, begin something new in a team effort. Okay, dear Virgo, I think I will leave it at that. I will, as I said, take more cards in the Vimeo extended reading. Do take care. Hope that this was helpful for you. Sending you lots of love and blessings. Stay well and stay happy. All the best for your birthday month. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, the tarot. Now on to the, a little bit of astrology for you. Mars did turn direct finally after a couple of months being in retrograde motion in Capricorn. So it is moving direct. Soon it will be in Aquarius. And it's not very happy in Aquarius. It's happy in Capricorn, um, but not in Aquarius. It doesn't seem to want to be there. So that's a really good thing, though. Um, having Mars turn direct has just been really, really difficult for everyone. There's been a lot of passive aggressiveness, not being able to move forward. 
you know, having Mars in Aquarius, being on top of that south node um, and being retrograde, uh, really, really difficult energies. Okay, so we're out of that difficult energy now. Finally, Mars going direct. For those of you that are ruled by Mars, which is Aries mostly, as well as Scorpio. Scorpio is co-ruled by Pluto and by Aries. Um, it seems that for, for those signs, those two signs, things will be much simpler and the energy that you're putting in, whatever you're trying to accomplish because it is in Capricorn, right? That is putting in the hard work, standing in your integrity, trying to push through um, a difficult energy such as uh, people that are of authority to you, right? That's what Capricorn is all about, putting in the hard work because that's the house of Capricorn is the house of career. So you will notice that things will come easier now. Also, uh, with Saturn being retrograde, and Saturn will be moving direct as well. Saturn will be moving direct as of the 6th of September. So we all know that Saturn is, you know, the authority figure himself. Anything to do with, you know, the father, the boss, any authorities. Um, it could even be... Um, authority such as the police, right? Any sense of authoritarian energy over you will be, you know, if you've done the hard work, you'll be able, you've got a sort of a chance to move forward because whatever you've been working on whilst the, uh, whilst the planet was actually going backwards, all that hard work will be paying off. So you're reaping the rewards. You are getting some accolades for all that hard work. So as well as that, we've got Pluto, Pluto in Capricorn as well, which is moving direct um, on the last day of September, the 30th of September. So all those big planets, all the... Um, the malefic planets, Mars, Saturn and Pluto, are all moving direct from yesterday up until the end of September. There's going to be a window of opportunity, right, to do things that have to do, that deal with Capricorn. Anything that is Capricornian for you, whether it be authority, whether it be appearance, whether it be career, even things to do with your home because the opposite sign, the the karmic sign to Capricorn is Cancer and Cancer is the house of home. Again, mother. Um, the house of Cancer is the mother. The house of Capricorn is the father. Now, because Cancer is the home, it can rule both parents. So that's how the energies work, right? Both All those three planets going, those big players moving direct is a blessing. Thank goodness for September, what can I say? Now, we've got a new moon in September on the 9th and the new moon in September is in Virgo. So, dear Virgos, it's time to make your wish. You have your new moon of the year so it is time for you to begin new things it is time for you to start something new now don't forget to make that wish as soon as you see the moon crescent in the sky as soon as you can actually see it not when you cannot see it when it's not visible that's when you make your wish right and hopefully in the next six months when we have the full moon in, um, in Virgo in in another six months your, you should be able to receive that wish, that special wish that you have sent out to the universe, right? Now, just another thing in relation to Venus. Venus is going to be going retrograde on the 6th of October, which is not very far off. So for those of you that want to do any, um, any surgery, anything to do with beauty, um, so anything to do with, you know, changing, anything to do with your body, anything 
to do with your physical body, right? Um, it is time to do it now. Do not wait until October. Venus is going to be retrograde uh, from the 6th to the 16th, 6th of October till the 16th of November. So you've got the window of September to do whatever you need, like plastic surgery, Botox, whatever thing you do to your appearance. If you want to make sure that it works out well, because when Venus is retrograde, we do not make purchases. We don't go overboard with money, spending money. Anything we do like that, we may regret. So please take note of that. Now in the month of September, we've got a full moon in Aries on the 24th of September. Full moon in Aries, right? It's at the first degrees. So for those of you that have got uh, planets in the beginning of the Aries season, do know that there will be, you know, you will be affected mostly by the full moon. Full moons are culminations, their clarity, right, because the moon is so lit up from the sun, which is right across the chart to it. Now, um, so a lot of the retrogrades are ending, right? We've recently had up to seven, like six planets in retrograde plus, I think it was six planets, right? Plus Chiron going retrograde. Now, uh, with these three big players moving direct as well as um, in the month of September, as I said, um, as well as Mars having gone direct, right? So Mars, Saturn, Pluto. Uh, Mars is, as I said, on the 27th of August, it's gone direct. So, wow, fantastic. Now, Saturn and Pluto. 6th of September for Saturn, Pluto 30th of September. It is looking great. Now Uranus is still retrograde up until January, the beginning of January. Neptune will be moving direct on the 24th of November. That's still got a while to go. And Chiron will be moving direct in February next year. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of the our, even our personal planets, right? moving direct but as I said uh, Venus will be moving retrograde very soon so do take care do whatever you have to do in September anything to do with uh, anything that we love because Venus is love and it is money now I think I will leave it at that one last thing before I uh, finish up the astrology there is a major Earth trine. It's a triangle, right? It's connected by three trines, which are very positive, very positive. It's the most positive energy or meeting in the sky of the planet, planets, I could say. So we've got Saturn in Capricorn at the top of the chart, right? And then it touches on Uranus, which is in Taurus, and touches across to the sun in Virgo. So there is a beautiful trine, earth trine, all in earth signs. So Capricorn, Taurus and Virgo are very beneficially um, reaping some sort of beautiful flowing energy, right, at this time. And it's great to see. So Saturn is the restrictive energy, right? Uranus is breaking down what does not work, what we do not value. The sun in Virgo is, the sun is how we see the world. It's healing. It's, it's us, right? It's also the father. The sun is, rules the father, right? Um, and the sun is who we are, right? It's our core. And that is trining over to Saturn. So, Yes, working through restrictions, breaking down what does not work and healing as well. Healing because the sun is a very healing energy. It's also a, an energy of vitality. So a lot of energy, especially with Mars having gone direct, you will notice that everyone has got a lot more energy now. 
Okay, I think I will leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to watch the astrology part. Do keep well, thank you, and lots of love and lots of blessings till our next our next videos, which will be mid-September. Take care until then. Bye-bye.